I know I'm late to the party on this one, but Sony is skipping E3 2019. Hey stragglers and tourists, my name is the iPad Cat. Just a quick little FYI before we start. If you're wondering where I've been or why I've been absent so long, I made a channel update on the topic that you can watch here. So, the more this year drags on, the more out of character Sony seems to behave. In this video I'll not be going over the actual news itself that much because you've all heard the story by now. I'll discuss why I think they've decided to do as they've done, what they might do instead and most importantly how it affects The Last of Us Part 2 and when we get our next glimpse of it. Anyways, without further ado, let's get on with it. So, November 15, around two weeks ago, Sony announced that they would not be attending E3 2019. They attributed this choice to a changing and evolving industry and that they want to explore new ways to engage their community in. To be perfectly honest, this doesn't surprise me as much as it would have done if they had said they'd be skipping E3 last year. Everything they've done since E3 this year and, to some extent, the E3 conference itself has been very different and, as I said in the intro, out of character from what they've done previous years. There's practically been radio silence ever since June and none of the pompous and explosive events we're used to have happened. We saw nothing at Gamescom, not that Sony has had a big present there before, but still. That was followed by nothing at Paris Games Week at the end of October, as well as the announcement of there being no PSX in December this year. I don't know about you, but that does not feel like the Sony I know. So them skipping E3 next year wasn't too much of a stretch after all that. This leaves us with the question, why? What industry changes and new ways of marketing could be great enough or exciting enough to change everything about the way your company handles marketing? We all know Sony has been massively successful during the span of this console generation. They're miles ahead of their competitors in consoles sold and presumably in games sold for their platform as well. Why fix something that isn't broken? Well, it might not be broken now, but it very well may be set up for breaking in the near future. If you look at the reception of E3 the last few years, it's actually been pretty negative. Both this year and last year, Sony got a lot of flack, both for technical issues but also for not really having anything interesting to show. They usually reserve the spotlight during these big events for their exclusives, which make up their trump card over their competitors. But as Robin Gaming said in his video on this topic, when we see these same games at E3 after E3 after E3, they lose their initial novelty, excitement and wow factor. Maybe these industry changes they're talking about is that games, or at least games like their exclusives, just take longer to produce now than a few years ago. I mean, that was the reason they did cancel PSX and probably didn't have a presence at PGW. The simple fact that there was nothing new to show. Some people have also theorized that the fact that there is nothing new to show and why Sony has been so quiet is that the PS5 or whatever the next gen PlayStation will be called is closer than you think. Personally, I'm not so sure about that. A console generation typically lasts 7 years. That would mean the PS5 would be out fall 2020 at the earliest. However, the rate at which technology advances is ever increasing, so that time frame could be shorter now for all we know. But until proven otherwise, I believe that the PS5 is still ways off. Another reason a lot of people have brought up is the fact that other companies have been pulling out of E3 and other events in favor of doing their own events instead. And that is certainly a possibility too. Why cram yourself into an event where you have a lot of competition when you can do it on your own terms, somewhere else or some other way. On the topic of that, what can we expect from Sony instead? Well, just as with why they've decided on pulling out of E3, I don't really know. But we can always theorize and speculate. Well, I think they might be abandoning, gathering everything they've got at these big events, 
a few times a year and instead taking the approach of showing what's ready whenever it's ready. That way they can avoid things like having the same exclusive appearing a million times at their events and people losing interest in them and at the same time have a steady stream of hype going their way as there is always something going on and being marketed or teased. What they said when they announced that PSX wasn't going to happen this year I think supports this. They said that they'd be going into 2019, focusing on titles like Dreams and Days Gone. Now the reason they mentioned just those two games, out of all their, well, more anticipated exclusives, is probably just because they're more relevant right now, since they're closer to release, I mean. So instead of talking about and hyping up every imaginable exclusive for the next half decade, they'll do it like Bethesda traditionally has marketed their games only really market and talk about them when they're closer to release. I don't know, but that's just my theory on it. Anyways, you might have sat through this whole video wondering why I'm talking about all this stuff when the title said the video would be about The Last of Us Part 2. Well, that's what we're going to talk about now. So when Sony announced that there would be no PSX this year, I was very surprised. And I made a video about it in relation to Part 2. Kind of like this video. In that video, I asked in a poll when people thought we'd see our next glimpse of Part 2. And despite PSX being cancelled because of Sony having too little to show, a whopping 54% of people thought that there would still be something at Paris Games Week. Now, I'm certainly not calling any of these people stupid, because, well, it's just so out of character and unusual of Sony to not attend any of these events. In second place came the other event alternative, and most of those votes were probably referring to the Game Awards 2018, since I managed to forget mentioning that in the video and the poll. But that still only got 21% of the votes. I myself voted for E3, but well, that won't happen either. Now there is a good argument to be made for a trailer or a release date reveal at the Game Awards, because The Last of Us Part 1 appeared at the Game Awards multiple times before release, most notably with this reveal trailer in 2011. But if I'm going to be honest, I think the only reason it appeared there was that PSX wasn't reintroduced after its absence since 2003 until 2014. And well then, everything The Last of Us Part 1 related was already wrapped up since the game and all the DLC had already released. If PSX had been a thing in 2011, I'm certain Sony would have featured it there instead. The notion that The Last of Us Part 2 will appear on the Game Awards is based on a pattern from previous titles, but I wouldn't say Sony has exactly followed its previous patterns recently, would you? There is still a good chance that Part 2 will be featured during the Game Awards though. A snippet of the E3 demo was in fact in a recent trailer for the event, which may be hinting at a new trailer, or at least something. But, as Sony hasn't really made their presence clear there, as far as I know, combined with the fact that they said that there weren't enough to show to hold a PSX, and that looking forward into 2019, they're focusing on Dreams and Days Gone, and not The Last of Us Part 2, makes it feel very much up in the air still. Though, believe me, I would happily eat my words in a few days. I'm still going to be glued to the stream of it, since there is a possibility we might end up getting something. So, when do I think we will see our next glimpse of Part 2? I think Sony has made it pretty clear that they're not doing events anymore. At least for now. So that really makes it hard to pin down a certain time when we can expect it. But I'd say whenever it's closer to being ready, we'll start seeing more of it. Maybe after Dreams and Days Gone are out of the way, or maybe before. It's really hard to say. Uncharted 4 had a multiplayer beta a few months before launch, so that might be something we get for part 2 as well. When do you think we'll get our next glimpse? Answer the poll up there in the top right corner. Anyways, those are just my thoughts and theories on Sony skipping E3 next year, and how it affects part 2. What do you think? Do you agree with my points? Disagree? Tell me in the comments down below and let's discuss it. And until next time, have a great day.